Good morning and welcome to Social Media Bootcamp. My name is Josh Oaks and I want to show you how professionals can be safe and effective on social media. This is going to be a fun boot camp, if you will, because it'll get right to the good stuff. No buzzwords, no fancy uh, talking. I'm going to put my phone on silent and we're going to dive right on in if that's okay. So here I am in Los Angeles. You guys are in Denver. I'm very excited to get the opportunity to share with you. First of all, you should be asking, who is Josh Oaks, this guy with this weird last name? Well, uh, I ran for politics six years ago in a small suburb of Los Angeles called Hermosa Beach. Hermosa Beach uh, was a great little beach town uh, on the side of the city, but I was the youngest person on the ballot, and here's a picture of me voting for myself on the day of the election. Yes, that is legal, and I, my friends, was... was uh, Confident but scared at the same time and the reason I was a little bit scared was because I was so young But there was one thing I had that other candidates did not and this relates to business and the reason why I'm talking to you today I had a clear understanding that even though I was the youngest person on the ballot I knew that when people would see my sign just like a real estate agent would have his sign on, on a, His or her sign on a house on bicycles. They'd get their name out there People would see my name more than anyone else because I made my signs the reverse color. Did a lot of research on that. And uh, I put my sign everywhere. I had a scrappy group of 20-year-olds that really wanted me to win, and everybody was behind the underdog. And when they would see my name on a sign, what would they do next? They would go to the Internet, and they would search for me. And so what I did is I made sure that my resume, and we all have resumes, whether you're a real estate agent or whether you're a highly paid speaker in Los Angeles, or if you even have a job, you have a resume, and it is the new, the first page of Google. And today I want to teach you how I, a bunch of my tips and tactics on how I set up my first page of Google to make sure that it is something where other people are saying great things about me in addition to myself showing my portfolio. So that's what I want to show you today. I ended up finishing politics and I wrote a book called Light, Bright, and Polite. And it taught businesses and professionals how to use social media safely and effectively. One of my bigger clients, and I got the opportunity to to work with some of the world's biggest brands, Universal Studios came to me and said, will you tweak this? We want to use you for a pilot program. Uh, we want you to teach Light, Bright, and Polite to kids. I said, absolutely. And it really launched a speaking career in the kids space. And now I travel the country speaking to about 30,000 kids a year, in addition to about 5,000 parents a year, teaching their kids, here is what employers want from you, here's what colleges want, and here's how you can shine online. Very, very similar stuff. And we really teach them a little bit of a different way of doing that, putting their best foot forward. And some some people ask, well, you, you're just trying to get people into college. No, these techniques have worked with some of the world's biggest brands that we've gotten the great the, the good fortune to work with. Whether it's Universal Studios, Hollywood, Luxor, and Palms Casino, very very relevant, or Eminem's uh, Cascade, which is a very famous DJ that travels around the world, or my alma mater, which is Disney. Uh, when I was my first career out of college, traditional brand marketing, and even other politicians have relied on us to write their messaging in a way that is light, bright, and polite. Currently have government contracts with Amtrak California. Our stuff is some of the safest in the business while still being a little bit fun, but that's for you to decide. Okay, Josh, talk to us about what you're going to show us so that we know what to, to expect. Well, in the bottom right, you can see the yellow brick road. Our little friends, uh, Dorothy, is going to Emerald City, and that's our goal today, um, is really to get, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and we want to follow a very, very simple road. First, I want to show you what not to do on social first, and I hate telling people what not to do, but we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Next, I want to show you where you should be online as a professional and also as a parent, but as a professional. Next, I want to show you what you should post online. I'm a very positive person, so giving you good examples is probably the best bet. And then how often to post online. I want to show you, give you a rough guidance because a lot of people ask, well, I, Josh, I don't have time for this stuff, right? I want to give you just a, a, a rough benchmark. And then last, number five, how to search for yourself, because I want to show you how your clients perceive you uh, on this new resume that you have, that we're all aware of. And then number six, I have a bonus round for parents, a couple parent discussion, family social media tips that will apply to business. This all is parallel. You have to understand your kids and your clients, uh, they're, 
yeah, I talk with thousands of kids a year and I have uh, dozens of clients. So I really see a lot of parallels and I'll show you some of my favorite tips. Now, what are your concerns? Well, let me throw out some concerns nationwide that businesses and parents have about social media and we're gonna answer them as we go through today. First of all, Josh, do prospects at companies and, and people that I wanna work with and sell homes to or do business with, do they really have time to Google and search for me online before we work together? The answer is yes. Some stats show that 80% of people will Google you and search for you to find out the dirt behind you before they vote for you in politics or before they wanna work with you. They wanna find out who this person is, right? Next, Josh, should I really be public or should I still remain to be private on social media? Josh, you don't understand, I don't put much on social media, so when people Google me, they won't find much. Well, I'm gonna show you how very different that actually is on the other side of the coin and how it's Google's job to put things on the first page of Google when someone searches for your name. And I'll show you exactly how to search for your name and how very many other people come up and they're probably not as wholesome or as professional as you. Josh, what is the ROI of my time spent on social media? I wanna give you some ways and some examples on how it can actually save you time in the long run. Now, there's a very fine line there uh, it can indeed be a time suck, but I'll show you how I never have to explain to people what's going on in my life because once a week they get a quality photo of either my family or the projects we're working on or a group photo of my clients. I'm going to walk you through that. Josh, what should I post on social media to keep me top of mind without me going out of my mind? We're going to show you exactly what to do there and how that works. And then... Uh, how can I keep up with social media, Josh? There's a new app out each week. It's exhausting. I'm going to show you just the apps I want you to be on. Now I'm going to turn over to um, Kimberly said they had me on the phone as well, but I was getting an echo. Okay, great. So Kimberly, you can dial back in if you want, and I'll put everybody on mute a little bit for right here. And if you need anything, go ahead, and uh, I've got everybody on mute. So if you need anything, go ahead and hit me up in the chat box. All right, so we've talked about some concerns. Now I want to show you back over to the Yellow Brick Road, step one, what not to do on social media. Now you are all professionals, your leaders, and if I use some of Chris's terms, Chris is very proud of you, and he said that, you know, if I, it's Chris's desire that you lead by example, and you do this at home as well. So I'd rather show you if you're giving your kids keys to a Ferrari or you're giving your staff, whether it's a thousand agents or a hundred staff members, if you're giving them the keys to a Ferrari or they're already driving that Ferrari, why not show them what could go very, very wrong if they crash? So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Here's a, here's a tip. Remember, everything is public. Uh, that's a little bit of a, a teaser there for you. I want to talk to you about how to get fired. Now, I know a lot of you aren't employees in the sense, but your professionals that are in a, in a way partners and, and ambassadors for your firm. But I want to talk to you about a company that I haven't worked with yet. They're called Cisco. And this is an example. We're not going to pick on somebody. We're going to use it as an example. You can use this with your kids and you can especially use it with your employees. So Cisco is a great company. When I talk to kids nationwide, I ask them who, who has a best friend in the audience. They all raise their hand. And I tell them, look, best friends and colleagues uh, re and communities are built on bumping into the same people every day, working with them. Same thing happens not just in high school, but in college and in your career. Uh, what if I told you a company like Cisco has 72,000 chances to bump into great people and meet and, and have just excellent relationships with people at your company? Not only that, if you love uh, working in other countries or traveling, you can travel to one of 65 plus countries. And then last, uh, there's some revenue in it for raises and all kinds of great stuff to take care of your family. And last, the technology that they use is pretty cool. Over 300 million of all TV homes watch using Cisco technology. So it's something fun to talk about. But what I want to do is I want to show you exactly how to get fired from this organization with just one tweet. So here's what happened. A young woman, she went to a great college, she had a great resume, and 
she was asked, she applied to a Cisco and she filled out perhaps the online form and said, I'd like to come work there. Here's my background. Great grades, great college, great. They called her and they said, we love your application. We'd like to bring you in for a first round interview. What do you think? She said, great. She went in a week later, had a wonderful interview. She shined uh, well in person, if you will. She, she did great. And um, as soon as she's done with the interview, it went well. She went home. She got a call a week later, and they said, we would like to invite you to work here. We like you so much. You did well in your application in person. You were excellent. Uh, we would like you to come work here. She said, great, I'd love to. And the next thing she did was she went to Twitter. Now, I want to show you the exact tweet that she sent. Here's the tweet. Cisco just offered me a job. Now I have to weigh the fat paycheck against the daily commute and hating the work. So she sent this tweet out. Now, do you guys think that Cisco listens to their brand name, even if you don't include the little at sign in the upper left of their name, right before their name? The answer is yes. As a guy that runs social media for some big brands, uh, publicly traded, privately traded, and for the government, I am here to tell you, on behalf of big brands, big clients, and very smart and savvy people that they are listening because they want to know what people think of their brand and they want to hit people up before they go to Yelp. They want to know where the, the pain points are. So not only does the social media department and even the HR department listen to social media, but senior VPs like this person I'm about to show you, they listen because they want to help people. They like Cisco. So here's what somebody from, uh, that was a senior VP at the company said. He replied on Twitter, who is the hiring manager? I'm sure they would love to know that you will hate the work we here at Cisco are versed in the web. Basically saying, hey, we listen online, silly. We listen to our names spelled forward and backward and everything else. Uh, if you are gonna hate the work right up front, you're high, you haven't even been in the office, and you think that the daily commute's gonna be long, and that you, you're just here for a paycheck, we've got tons of other people, right? So this young woman, uh, as you may have guessed, she, she was given an awkward call and they said, uh, we'd like to rescind your offer. Thank you for applying, but we, we, uh, we have other opportunities. Now you're thinking to yourself, Josh, this young woman has all kinds of other opportunities because she had a great uh, set of grades, a great college. She interviewed well, Josh. Why are you using this example in a negative manner? Well, this is where it gives it into us as professionals and how very important it is that our online resume is stellar. You see this one incident, was discovered by a lot of different people and now it's an incident on the web and it was uh and now if you were to google this young woman on the upper left look at her google results you can either google uh her name or cisco fatty paycheck which is what she's known as now and you'll see it's cluttered with all these different results of how it's picked up and she is actually the person that got fired with one tweet and that's because the press loves to pick this kind of stuff up and this was written about by cnn abc news nbc news huffington post chicago tribune and the list goes on and now is it impossible for her to get a job no but it, it's an uphill battle and this is what i don't want for your family and especially for your agents your staff uh, we need to realize that our Google results are our resume. N gone are the days when you fill out a formal uh, form and say, this is who I am, PDF, uh, uh, this is yay, I, this is exactly who I am. No, people don't trust it anymore. They now are going directly to Google and they try and find out who you are. Okay, now let's go ahead and move into the next. These are my three favorite words on social media. First, before you ever press send on anything, whether you're a professional or a teenager, ask yourself, before I ever press send, ch check these three boxes in your head. Is this light? Is it positive? Is it fun? First, even if you're professional, you are a person, you need to have a little bit of fun on social media. If it is, check. Second, is this bright? Be smart, think first, am I gonna get fired from Cisco or lose this huge contract that we're trying to pitch? Or am I going to look bad to future prospects? If it's not, then check. Then it's, it's bright. That means it's light, bright, and last, is this something that's polite? Am I proud of it when my biggest customer, my biggest client, my biggest future employer, my dream job, my internship, my parents, or my spouse sees this on social media? If it is, 
then it's something that's light, bright, and polite, and I'm, I'm proud of it on social media. And that's the title of my new book that many of you may have in your hand. And by the way, the last five pages of the book have a notes area if you want to take notes there, the last five pages. And if you take a little picture and you tweet it at me, I will retweet it. Okay, and that's because every post is like a button on an elevator. It either takes you up or it takes you down. Every single post, oh Josh, you don't understand, I just post random stuff and it's silly and I talk, I, I went to USC and I talk bad about UCLA, so what? Every post either makes you look great or it makes you look terrible and if it's somewhere in the middle, I have a feeling it's that down button because it just is uh, marketing that probably doesn't help you. Josh, where should I be online? That's a very good question. Let's talk about some of the better networks. Now you could spend your time anywhere, but just as a, there's, there's lots of different types of investments and everybody in the room right now, you should know that my father and I are also in real estate. My dad's an investor and I, as a young kid, managed a lot of his apartment complexes. And so I do plumbing, electrical, heating, and a little bit of Spanish pretty well. And I know that where you put your money, it can either be an appreciating asset or a depreciating asset. When you jump on social media, exact same thing. You can be in the good networks, which I call the green zone and the green zone uh, is an appreciating network, or the red zone, which is depreciating. We'll stay away from the red zone. I just want to get to the good stuff. Josh, what makes the green zone good? Great question. First, it's productive. Posts can be discovered by Google, and the efforts can be discovered by clients. So when you spend time there, it appreciates, and it helps your online resume. Next, it's professional. Clients want to find you on these networks. They're there and they know that your behavior will be good and they want to connect with you anyways on those networks. Next, it's positive. Green zone networks are tied to the other person's and people's real identity. They're not anonymous and that encourages better behavior, which is a whole nother speech. Uh, next, parent friendly. Uh, and those of you that are parents in the room, the majority of you, uh, your kids are on many of these networks also, and you can keep up with their activities. Hidden benefit, win, 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 right? All right, Josh, what are these green zone networks? Stop talking to us and start showing us. Okay, first of all, I want you to make sure that you're on LinkedIn. We all know that, but you need to actually go spend some time there, redo your, your bio, make sure your photo's great. You understand, right? And I want you to spend the most time there. Why did I make it number one? It is the best place to adjust your Google results. And today's goal is to talk to you about your online resume. Next, Facebook. You probably already on Facebook. It's a great place to put out a couple photos, have people keep up with you. So first on LinkedIn is for companies and Facebook is the next thing that Google listens to. It says, hey, it's a real identity. It looks like a real person. People will go and look at it. Number three, what? You want me to be on YouTube, Josh? What are you talking about? Yes, if you feel comfortable, and I want you someday to feel comfortable giving real estate tours. You know, I tried to sell my grandma's uh, house. We, we actually had a real estate agent, but I didn't think they do the best job. And since I'm a marketing guy, I did a video tour of it, really fun on an iPhone and gave a, a whole tour and put it on the web under the address. So when people Google that, they found it. Everything you put on YouTube comes up above the fold on your new resume. And I, I'll show you some examples on why you should be on YouTube. Now, Josh, wait, Twitter, Twitter is exhausting. It's only for my kids. Yes, you don't have to be there, but I'm just putting it in an order of importance. Twitter comes up above the fold. If you do want to share a little bit of stuff, there was ways to link your LinkedIn to your Twitter or your Facebook to your Twitter. And then also last Instagram. And this is where your kids really want to be is Instagram. They don't want to be hanging out with you on Facebook and Instagram. There's a way to post once on Instagram, which is more of an image thing. And it goes to Twitter. It'll also go to Facebook and it can, if you want, go to LinkedIn. So these are the good green zone networks. If you want to take a screen grab, this is also being recorded. Um, and so we'll send this to you as well. But these are, are the, the five, if you will. Now, there's other ones. There's Pinterest. There's all these other ones. But as a professional, and I know a little bit enough about your industry to be dangerous, uh, these are places where you might consider the first one being LinkedIn. Josh, what should I post online? Talk to me about that. Oh, good question. Here's a tip. Positive group photos are kind of the secret sauce. What do you mean by that, Josh? Well, let me just dive in and show you how to create a portfolio of positive images. You know, every time I get hired, like I am right now, to, to present my content, people need to see what the outcome looks like. I'm gonna show you what the exact outcome looks like after I 
uh, after I work with people. So let me show you real examples. First of all, this is an intern we have from our company in the, in the past. She now works for the world's largest marketing agency, OMD Omnicom Media Group. Her name is Camille. She's on the far left. Camille's clients took her out. And even though they're all of drinking age, notice how there's no red cups, no beers, nothing inappropriate, smiling, great, no peace signs. She says, thank you to my clients for inviting me to join them in these great seats, go Dodgers. She has something fun to post and it's classy, really good, right? Next, on the far right, you'll see Rich DeMuro, who is a nationally syndicated tech reporter on KTLA Channel 5 News in Los Angeles, very successful at what he does. Instead of making it all about him, he says, thank you to Shelter Hope Pet Shop for letting us share some of our tech tips with you. Keep up the great work helping these dogs find loving homes. This shows people the guy's got heart and he's using his tech tips for help. He's not saying, watch me Channel 5 tonight. And yeah, all the right so they're not selling themselves they're showing uh, and they're being friendly online next this is my friend Lisa on the far right works for Disney and runs social media for them you would think it's all about selfies with her no she is the most light bright and light bright and polite person I know special thanks to my team at Disney parks for all that they do to make dreams come true at the most magical place on earth she always takes group photos classy photos ones that she is proud of every client and a future employer seeing disney loves it she's even in my book now this if you've ever wanted your daughter to be in the miss america pageant here is a great way to do so um miss utah on the far left says this instead of a selfie instead of wow this is great i'm having a great time it's thank you to my friends that supported me over the last year in the miss america pageant with their help i can represent utah and teach kids nationwide about setting their goals really classy group photo it's more than just her your kids want to take a selfie at easter instead do what camille does pull your whole family in there and put a fun message below it's days like this that make me thankful for my family and the great weather while we hunt for Easter eggs in the backyard. Secret tip for your kids, it actually makes you get you more likes, more comments, more hearts, shares, all that other stuff when there's lots of people in there and they're all smiling. Look how cute that little kid is, that little nugget. All right, here's a picture. I've got to bring it home, make it personal. Here's a picture of my family and I at the Grand Canyon. Now, my two sisters live in other parts of the country with their families, but uh, all, one little secret tip, if you put a dog in the photo, you get 10 more points. I'd say that 90% of your customers, your clients, and your staff really like dogs. And that's the first thing they look at and the first thing they ask about me. Hence why my picture that I put on the first slide of this uh, presentation had a dog. Thank you to my parents for joining me last week on a road trip to the Grand Canyon. Now notice that uh, I said thanks last week. If I said we're in Grand, the Grand Canyon right now, that would be me being uh, or saying to somebody, come rob me right now, right? So I delay my post by a week usually. You can still post, you can still have fun, just be a little bit smart about it. All right, Josh, uh, talk to I, Josh, I give a lot of my time around how can I run around town and be good at what I do without selling on social media, but still be top of mind. Great question. You see, I, I work with a lot of different, whether it's real estate agents or pilots, and I host this aviation friendly event. Rather than making it about me, we put 2,500 kids in planes every year and we teach them about STEM education. But instead of it being about me, group photo, one of my favorite people, Stacy on the far left, here's her three kids and her husband. Thank you to the volunteers that helped us give 100 plus kids the chance to sit in a real airplane today at Santa Monica Airport. Kind of fun, right? Different way to put myself forward. Rather than, hey, here's the mayor. This is one of the guys uh, that was in, in Hermosa Beach that... Um, pretty neat guy. I really like him. Thank you to the Walk with Sally Foundation for inviting me to participate in tonight's charity event. It was great bumping into my old friend Michael Di Virgilio, the next mayor of Hermosa Beach. Good guy. It was an all white party. We don't just dress like that together usually. All right, Josh, teach us what we shouldn't put below a picture. Great question. 
Uh, how to thank a sponsor for letting you perform or present. I, I guess I should change that perform to present. Now, I could have put below it, I spoke to 100 kids this weekend at Microsoft stores, and that would have been all about me. And I could have just put a picture of me, right? Instead, I asked everybody, let's take a group photo. I want to show other people that uh, what it feels like and do this, blah, blah, blah. And then I had them uh, raise their hands and st fun stuff. Here's what I really put under the, under the image. Thank you to, the Microsoft, or to Microsoft for allowing me to host a social media safety tour in four of their stores in Southern California this week. With their help, we positively impacted over 100 kids, right? A slightly different message in people go, whoa, this is amazing. I want to be a part of that. And I seem to be the leader in it and almost the, the leader of the volunteers, if you will, right? So slight change. You're seeing, uh, uh, you're seeing my messaging but Josh, what should I post online? Show us a breakdown. Well, let me give you a rough breakdown. Now that you've seen some of my secret sauce, uh, I want you to consider first and foremost, adding into uh, your social media mix, group photos of happy customers, colleagues. Take a picture in, with your staff, take a picture in front of a house. There's all kinds of things you can do. You've seen how I do this, whether even with my family. You need to have fun on social media, but it needs to be productive. 20% of the time, I'm group photos. Now, family or volunteer group photos, 20% of the time I'm posting those too. It's less about me, it's more about the activity and the organization that I'm a part of. And you know what? Every one of my clients and every one of my uh, former employers, future clients, and, and probably your employer as well, loves it when you say thank you to the employer or family or all these different stuff. I'll show you a couple secrets here. Next, helpful tips for your industry or from your hobbies. Now, this doesn't mean, hey, interest rates are the lowest right now. And, uh, and it means, hey, you know, if, you, if you're in your current home, you have uh, this going on with a leaky faucet, here's three ways to fix it right? Helpful stuff. For me, one of my hobbies, I'm actually very good with plumbing, electrical, heating. Sometimes I teach people how to fix their car and I, I create a YouTube video. It has nothing to do with my day job, but I'm helpful and my clients discover it and they go, wow, I didn't know you can actually uh, change headlights in your own vehicle. This is cool. So my point is I'm helpful. I'm top of mind. And I, I think about helping people and being friendly first, not selling them. Next, quotes from famous people. People that are light, bright, and polite, this always go, goes over well on Twitter. Send a great quote, whether it's Oprah or Abraham Lincoln. Uh, there are some great quotes out there. Next, social work events, whatever it is, take a photo, thank the organization, same type of thing 20% of the time. So you've got five sample posts. You can also take selfies. You can take more photos at holiday events, whatever. But these are examples that you could use that will add to your bottom line of your business and also keep you top of mind and still be more about the organization than just about you. Now, here's my secret formula that you got a glimpse at. First, you have to take photos uh, or you have to be a volunteer type of person. You have to go to events a little bit here and there. And, and that could be, even if you want to do this for your kids, and go to an animal shelter, a hospital or senior home, Habitat for Humanity, Walking a Neighbor's Dog, Kids Activities, Neighborhood Activities, or Home Improvement Projects. You've got to be doing something fun. It can't just be about your industry or what you're trying to push. And then once you've taken a picture at one of these events, consider taking a classy group photo and saying thank you, a sincere thank you to this organization for giving me the opportunity to do this activity and with their help, we had this outcome. And that kind of thing gets more likes, more retweets, puts you top of mind. Everybody goes, whoa, this is pretty awesome. I like that you were a part of this thing. All right, Josh, number four, how often should I post online? Great question. I'm going to move a little bit quickly. The tip is one to three times per week. Now, you could be an expert and be posting 37 times per week. But if you're not on social much and you have a full-time day job plus kids plus a mortgage, Yikes, this is a couple, here's a couple tips. One, we looked at LinkedIn already. My recommendation is if you can, post one time a week. If you can, uh, post a status update, link back to a website or something fun or upload a picture or connect your Instagram. Facebook, one to three times a week. If you can, post these great group photos. You know, some of your clients will come from Facebook. I hate to say it, but I, I get some 
great revenue from Facebook. And I don't sell there ever. I just show happy photos of happy customers uh, after speeches and consulting and clients, uh, some pu very large publicly traded companies have reached out to me because they're Facebook friends. Next, YouTube. Uh, if you can take a YouTube video once a month um, and show people, do a walkthrough, teach them something, put it on the web, it will come up on your first page of Google results. Twitter. There are scheduling pieces of software we can show you in another video another time, and you could post once a day, and that way you don't have to be in front of Twitter. You could post five tweets, put them in the system, and it posts them all week long. You could have an assistant do this as well, and Instagram is kind of fun. It's where your kids are at anyways one to three times a week. All right, put any questions you have there. I'm going to go quick into how to search for yourself, so we're going to do this uh, pretty quickly tip, start where most people go. Most of your clients, future employers, people that you want to work with, people that you want to sell to, uh, they are um, going to this next network. Josh, how can I monitor my online reputation? I want you to start with Google. And that's because that's where they're all going. And I want you to start by putting in your first name and your last name. We're going to go Google me in a few minutes. But first name and last name, these are all the different ways you should do this. First name, last name in quotes, and that gets very different people. That really hones it down. Just like you're searching for a house in Pasadena, California. And then you go, a house that's less than a million dollars, Pasadena, California. We're really just honing it in and telling Google it must be a first name and last name in this order. Now, you don't include the plus sign. And then you can include first name plus last name plus city because that's really going to hone in on you as a professional. And this is what your clients are going to do. They're going to find first name and last name. They're going to find all kinds of other Bill Smiths, right? And then they're going to want to find the Bill Smith in Denver. Next, first name plus last name plus company is very important. And that is where people say, well, I want to find your reputation professionally. Notice first and last is in quotes. And then next, first, middle, and last. Josh, what? You want me to put my first, my middle, and my last in Google? Yes, because when you do this, it'll show you some public records that might show you the value of your house that's public online. You can have that removed. And also, um, if you're all kinds of other stuff that is publicized. Your age, how many kids you have. It's crazy. These people go pull this public data, and they put it online in a random act, and it comes up. So do a first, a middle, a last. And if your first name is Chris, but really it's Christopher, put in, in that the public records one, put Christopher plus your middle name plus your last, because that seems to be what's on your birth certificate, which is what they're putting out there. Now, it doesn't mean they're going to go share your social security number. It simply means that they'll share sometimes your uh, other little things. And then last, put your email address, your primary and your secondary one. And you would be surprised if, in quotes, you put your email address, you'll see it leaked on the web. Uh, mine was leaked five times. And yet I'm a social media guy. It's not about perfection. It's about a process. Let's do this for me. Uh, let's go search Josh Oaks. And then you could search Josh Oaks in quotes. Then you could search Josh Oaks plus Santa Monica. I don't need to use, include California because people really put Santa Monica. Josh Oaks plus Disney, maybe a former employer. My current company I own is Media Leaders, but let's put Disney. It's a great example. Or Joshua Keith Oaks, right? Public records. And boy, you get about five or seven things come up. It's crazy. And then last, josh at medialeaders.com. My email address pops up. Some of our websites are registered to me. All kinds of different stuff. So it's important to know what's out there. This is a great way for you to clean up your online image. Now, uh, I normally ask this live, but have you searched for yourself? Let's go search for me. I want to show you the right way and the wrong way to search. There's two ways. There's not really a wrong way, but there's two ways to see two different sides of the coin. Let's go to Google. Notice how I'm logged in in the upper right. See my little picture up there? Let's go to Google and search for Josh Oaks without quotes. Oh, cool. We've got a bunch of this neat stuff. Great. Well, this is the wrong way to search for myself if I want to see how clients and future employers see me. And here's why. I'm logged in in the upper right, and that means that Google is listening to who I am and what I've posted in the past and shared, and it's trying to give me the most relevant results. And actually, clients... Uh, I'm, my results are on the left. If I'm logged into Gmail, to YouTube, or to anything else, it's Google and the Chrome system and Gmail are all listening. So it's giving me personalized results saying, hey, 
Uh, these are some results we think you should uh, know about. However, n notice my radio interview on the left, Business Rockstars, is not on the right. Wait, clients aren't going to see that? That's right, they're not going to see it. Instead, they see these images. They say, hey, Google, Google says, hey, we think this guy Josh Oaks is in Los Angeles, and here is an image of him. Uh, here's a bunch of images. So people can then click on those. Now, what do you think clients are going to click on first? They're going to click on images. Hence why I just spent 20 minutes talking to you about how important it is to do Google search results about images. And all the images I taught you how to do will end up in this bin. Okay, now Josh, how do I get from the left to the right? I want to see both sides of my, my Google results, the logged in on the left and the logged out on the right. Great question. Let's go look at that. Well, first, you could log out, my friends, of every Gmail account you have, uh, YouTube, Facebook, and everything else, and you could go back to Google and, and start typing in, um, you know, Josh Oaks. However, we all know, as adults, that there's no way we're going to remember our passwords when we want to get back in there. That's just exhausting. So, I have another technique. So watch carefully. I'm going to show you a little technique. You can use this in just about every browser. When you go on the upper right, instead of logging out, there is a feature called the New Incognito Window in Chrome. Now, if you use Chrome and your kids do, you're, you're, um, a lot of kids are using Firefox, Chrome, maybe Internet Explorer if they have to. But in incognito window in the upper right, if you click the little menu button up there, and you'll see it's the third one down, incognito, I'll show you what it does. And then if you're in Firefox, Internet Explorer, or Safari, it's called new private window or private browsing. Uh, those, what they're going to do is this following technique. You click on them. And what it does is it opens up a new window. And this new window looks like this. You see the creepy little spy guy in the upper left? He is essentially saying, hey, Josh, I've left all of your other tabs intact. I haven't logged you out of anything else in your normal session. I created a new session for you. And this new session now is uh, just in this tab. You can go to Google, Josh, and look at all your other tabs are back there in the back. They are uh, bull, you know, they're, they're blurred out. But in this new session, Josh, now you can go to Google and I'll let you run around Google and I'll hide your cookies and see how it says sign in in the upper right. Well, we're not going to sign in for this one thing. Instead, we're going to go search for myself. Ah, there we go. Now we're seeing images. And this is kind of the way a client would see us. Now, uh, side note, this only works if you're searching for yourself because you create so much content and clicks and shares around yourself that you dilute and you buy, you create a bias around search results around yourself. So you could do this for any other property as well. If you're working with a property a lot, you might dilute that city, that property, that project, and it's good to log in and logged out incognito. Just see what the search results are, right? Hopefully that made sense. Now, Josh, what happens if someone's going to click on images? Well, let's go look at my image results, right? And normally I talk with kids about, hey, look, it's me in the upper left speaking at an event. Uh, I encourage one of my friends in the insurance industry to give $15,000 to the firefighting department for this life-saving thing. And you better believe I jumped in there and took a picture with it. I was the one that directed the funds. And then here's me in the politics, me with my dog in the upper right. But I don't know if you can see this halfway down on the right hand side. Why is there a baby dressed as Harry Potter in my Google results? Uh, long story short, I was on Pinterest trying to get to know the network, which is a highly, uh, it's all about kind of fashion and, and what, planning your wedding and all kinds of stuff. I pinned something that was adorable to uh, uh, create a folder or a bin on there that is called adorable things worth sharing. And I because I'm an uncle of a new kid, I, and it was around Halloween, I pinned some Halloween costumes in there, and one of them was a kid dressed as Harry Potter. Adorable. That made total sense on Pinterest. Does that make sense as a professional public speaker on social media safety if it ends up in my Google results? No, it doesn't. So here's how I got rid of it. I clicked on it, and I went, oh, what I do on other networks, silly, is uh, it comes back to my Google results. So. I clicked on it, it took it full screen, it said, do you want to visit the page where this exists? I went to the page, I unpinned it, and it removed it from my Google results. But that's a cute way to use myself as a bad example. Okay, and the question is, do you feel comfortable printing out your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter page for a client meeting? Do you feel comfortable saying to them, hey, my name is Chris, and here I am, but I want to show you, you know that I'm the best in the business, and I can give you, 
knowledge about your industry, your neighborhood, better than anyone else. But let me show you who I am also on the side. Uh, you probably don't know this, but I'm a real life person. I have a lot of fun. Here's my nephew. Here's my kids. Here's right. I travel and and I I'm a I'm a full well-rounded person. If you feel comfortable printing out every one of your networks, even if they're private taking them into an interview or a client meeting or a presentation, you're moving in the right direction. If you don't, I want you to consider that. Can you do that? I make it so that I can. Okay, here's a little bonus. And then we're gonna wrap it up. This is a three minute slide. It's family social media safety tips for those of you that have kids running around. Um, here's a tip. First of all, if you're fortunate enough to be Facebook friends or Instagram friends with your kids on social media, here's something to consider. Consider not commenting directly on your kids' or students' posts. Instead, consider using their posts to start a discussion around the dinner table. You know, millions of kids went from Facebook over to Instagram, and parents were asking why. Well, it's because when kids would post on Facebook and they're friends with their parents, parents would see the image and they, parents would comment below immediately, feeling as though their, their love of their life, their child, needed to hear from them on social media. And they'd say, oh, honey, sweetheart, baby, oh, I love you so much, I'll see you tonight at home. I can't wait to hear about the, how you won this award at school, this is great. Well, it makes the kid goes, geez, mom, I just need some space, right? So consider, instead of commenting or liking, now, you could be a, you could have a special relationship with your kids and, and if that's the case then please throw this idea out the window but most kids uh would love to have you do this just don't comment on it don't like it don't share it unless your kids want to want you to instead bring it up around the dinner table bring it up on the way to school or home or around Chris, you know whatever christmas or hanukkah just go and say hey so how are things going secretly you know they want an award and you can gently allude to that but it'll be a much more uh normal thing Next, consider, parents, I know you're really cool and hip, but consider if you're going to go to Instagram, don't post more than once a day. Uh, kid, there's a secret hidden rule there. Kids do not want to scroll through and see things more than once a day from the same person. Uh, bottom line, if you want to post one time a week, three times a week, five times a week, just don't post more than one time a day, if that makes sense. Uh, long story short, I'm just getting you into the head of your kids based on all the kids I talk with. Next. Consider showing your kids a couple of these techniques in this manner. Take a classy group photo at work, at the office, with the staff, at a barbecue, whatever, and consider having your students or kids teach you how to post it on Instagram. If you're not on Instagram, here's a great way to turn your kids into the experts. Write a great message below, put it in paper, and go, hey, son or daughter, this is what I want to post. I want to post this message below this photo and show your kids the image and say, can you teach me how to do this? The kids then show, the kids will then ask, wait, you want, you want to actually, you, you think that your employer is going to see this post? What are you talking about, mom? Yes, uh, I, I know for a fact that my employer should see this post because everything's public and I want to be live a life that's light, bright, and polite on social media. Your kids subtly will go, whoa, this is an example I haven't seen before. It will uh, set a good example for them. And when you make your kids the expert and have them teach you how to use one of the apps, consider making it one of the green zone apps, obviously, because then you're hanging out where they're at and you're hanging out where professionally it makes the most sense where your clients want to be. And also, when you make your kids the expert, then you can turn around when they're making bad decisions in the future and you can say, hey, you were the expert. Uh, you knew how to use this device better than me and I asked you how, but I know how to navigate um, this life situation i have more wisdom here so now let me be the expert right just a little tip and then one last kicker just for fun you know when you're talking with your kids there's a little bit of a generational gap there literally and figuratively consider not using the phrase when your kids are trying to teach you twitter and they say oh when you mom when you retweet or dad when you retweet this you get tons of retweets and then people share it and this happens you get favorites Consider not replying back with, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to retweet? What? Instead, because what you're doing is you're putting up a barrier. You're putting your hands out going, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're, I, I don't get this, and I, I need you to teach me how to be young again. Instead, ask, okay, what happens when I do that? And when you do that, it's basically you're along for the ride saying, well, that's neat. right? So instead of asking why, say, okay, what happens when I do that? and what's next, those kinds of things. So just a couple little tactical tips. All right, we're back to our map to go into Emerald City, uh, Yellow Brick Road. We've covered 
what not to do on social media. I showed you how to get fired. If you're, if you're dying to know how to get fired, you can use send that one tweet to Cisco and know exactly what your clients will not like. Where you should be online, I showed you a bunch of networks. What you should post online, I showed you a bunch of networks there, or a bunch of types of pictures and stuff. How often to post online, I gave you just a little bit of an, an overview of that. And then how to search for yourself, perhaps the most important part. And then as a bonus, I gave you some family online safety tips. I'm Josh Oaks. I'm so honored that you guys are a part of this. And I'm really honored to get to, sh to share this with you because I do love real estate. I love sales. I'm not very shy, as if you didn't already know. And uh, this is really something I want you to think about is your online Google results could be that they really are your next resume and the next place that your biggest client uh, really are going to go to just to learn the dirt about you and what really is going on instead of just seeing you on the Coldwell Banker website or in the PDF uh, um, package that you send them and so on, right? Thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate you being here.